Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range. Now, in an earlier video, my German cousin Kurt uh, went over what he sees as some of the particularly excellent features of this here Car 98K. Now, you might have noticed that the rifle has, in fact, seen better days, and that's part of the reason why I bought it. Um, another reason is the price is right and I'm a cheapskate. Uh, and another reason is that the guy I bought it from is a top bloke and runs an awesome gun shop, so uh, messy film out us. Now, it's often rather more interesting to look at a field-worn example of a rifle than a, uh, a factory new one or one that's clearly been kept in excellent condition because it's not so much how they perform immediately out the box, it's how they perform umpteen thousand rounds later when they've, in this case, literally been through the wars. Now this has a couple of interesting little uh, points of wear and a couple of interesting fixes on it. So I shall bring the camera around and show you. So like Kurt, we're gonna start at the pointy end for once. Now this rifle doesn't seem to have had a foresight uh, protector hood on it. Not all of them did. And an obvious point of wear is the barley corn, which has worn quite shiny and a bit round. So it's not exactly great for precision aiming. Now, the two major points of wear that I want to point out are, first of all, this is very interesting because um, that pin there, let me just try and zoom in on that. That pin there that's holding the rear sight leaf in shouldn't be. That's actually a safety pin. It should be in the middle. Now, the rear sight has two trunnions that stick out either side and go into these, um, these rings here. Now, these rings have worn. Now this is softer material than the leaf um, and it's just quite surprising how much they've worn that they've worn enough that the safety pin there is uh, is actually touching and holding it on. Now now this means I can't actually use the sight set on 100 meters because this is up a bit and uh, if anyone knows how to fix this without taking the whole thing off I'd be very grateful to know how to do it simply because the massive design flaw in the uh, Car 98K here is that the, the rear sight base is soldered on. So is the front sight base. So whereas on a Swiss rifle or many other types of rifle, they would just, would just be keyed in and there'd be a bolt or two that was holding it and you could take it off forwards or sideways. Here you can't, you've got, actually got to desolder it um, and desolder the front sight, take it off, replace it. That's a gunsmith job and you've got to get the alignment of that sleeve absolutely bang on perfect otherwise the sighting is going to be way off and without the factory jigs for that it's a seriously skilled gunsmith job and will cost far more than I paid for the rifle so that's not going to happen we're just going to work with it set at at least 200 meters where you no longer see that part of the leaf when you look through the rear sight now the other interesting point of wear here is actually just it's hidden under under the receiver bridge here. Now if I take the bolt out, you can see that there's something a little funny going on with the extractor. And then you look, and actually the rear of the extractor spring has worn a groove, really quite deep groove. Uh, in the rear of the bolt. This is clearly a rifle that's seen a lot of rounds through it because uh, it's going to take a lot of work to wear that ruddy great groove in it there. Now what they've done here is that they've weakened the extractor spring at that point, presumably drawn its temper, bent it so that it's back in contact and remounted it. It works fine, but you can see there where um, it's, had a, it's had a gouge cut out of it. I'm not sure if you can see it on film. Um, but it's been gouged so that it can be bent. Uh, it's also unclear whether it's only this that's worn and the uh, lug on the extractor spring hasn't or whether it's both. But uh, it's clearly an interesting, uh, interesting uh, unexpected wear pattern, shall we say. As for the rest of the bolt, it doesn't match the receiver. Um, no idea who or why the, these, these cuts have been made. It could have been when it was in service with uh, whoever put a Cyrillic L on it. Um, it's, uh, yeah, as I said, it's clearly been through the wars. It's got, it's got late war um, beach woodwork on it. With, uh, there's no 
bolt disassembly disc. It's just got the, the hole in the butt that serves the same purpose to stop soldiers breaking the firing pins. Um, late war, late war fabricated and welded bands, uh, non-matching magazine floor plate. We've got different serial numbers all over the place, but the, uh, but the receiver and the, uh, and the barrel are serial numbered to each other. So it's presumably the original barrel from 1938. But, uh, yes, we shall be uh, doing plenty of uh, bloke on the range experimentation with this particular piece in the near future. Oh yeah, by the way, those who think that the uh, controlled feed in the magazine system is absolutely bomb proof, um, here's a little bit of footage of some dodginess going on with some 2013 dated Romanian uh, ball ammunition. Who says they've never seen a bolt action jam? Which commenter was that? Here we go. Here's one. Huh. Oh, great. Okay, so I was just doing some zeroing of the rifle off camera, and uh, we've got a hard extraction. And me with my wrist injury, and yes, the jokes write themselves, thank you. And I know there's steel cases, and I know it's a shagged out old gun, but ow! Now, the primary extraction on the Mauser isn't actually that positive. Um, it's actually the bolt handle acting on this cam surface here. So as the bolt handle comes up, it knocks against that and pulls. Now if you've got a rough chamber, which this one might well have, it's not actually very positive at all. It's not like a Schmidt Rubin where, or, an, or a Lee Enfield, where the, uh, the bolt moves back on a on a camming action with the lugs pulling it back with much more force no it's really it's this last whoa, 20 30 degrees or so of bolt travel i think this is going to need some persuasion okay another interesting issue that you wouldn't necessarily think of i'm on a range here um, i've got rounds in the magazine and i've got an empty case trapped in the chamber so I can't rightly go waving the rifle around to find something to persuade this with. So I have to bring something to me and then see. There we go. Now remember that a lot, if not the majority, of German 8mm Mauser ammunition during the war was steel cased. Now another interesting bit of wear here is the cocking piece at the back has become quite rounded and the uh, corresponding camming surface there has also become quite rounded to the point where if I press in the plunger here it will just automatically snap closed. So um, there's, there's now no mechanical blockage between those two surfaces anymore at all. Um, this actually helps with the smoothness of the operation. So uh, when we get into rapid fire testing with this rifle, this will be very much in its favor. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Please come and join in the fun and japes on the Facebook page. And if you feel like supporting this kind of uh, content financially, please consider supporting us on Patreon as well. Thanks very much. Bye.